Hey guys, today I'm going to be making my video on how to do trades essentially. So I'm going to start here by going over the settings of trading and then we will actually jump into trades and the most effective methods of getting the most you can out of trades while giving up the least you want to. So the first thing you want to do is head into global settings. Player evaluation is going to be critical in trades. Make sure that you have your ratings set to whatever you want them to be. I would recommend turning on greater than maximum ratings and disabling relative ratings since they sort of just make things a little bit more confusing as you go out in your sims, but it's of course all up to you. Next thing you're going to want to do is head into players and face gen. I also recommend turning on the player personality ratings. Uh, you don't have to do that one either, but it's something that allows you to have a better idea of what your players are doing. And then you're going to come into the AI settings. In challenge mode, you will not be able to change trading preference, current year stat, or any of the stats weights, really. And lineup select. Well, you can change lineup selection, actually. But here, the spit is what's going to affect how trades are going to work in your sim. I've been playing on one tick above average trade difficulty, which is a six level. I think this is probably about the most fair at the moment in the game, as above... Trade difficulties above this really just make it impossible to trade and not very fun. Trade difficulties below this are still pretty easy to abuse. With the ratings weight, this will essentially just tell teams how much or what they're going to use to evaluate their players. A ratings weight is going to be how much their actual ratings will play into player value. And then stats weight is how much their statistics are going to affect that as well. Then you're going to head to your league settings and rules. We've got a few rules i could have sworn i clicked rules so you got a few things to check out here i like turning on the dh but that's irrelevant in this case i like turning on injured players green seven days trading that's realistic you could trade players if they're hurt period i don't know why this is disabled there's really no reason for it to be their trade ai is fine with it i also like enabling draft pick trading although you don't have to do that either and that is obviously not as realistic so now we've got our trading settings set. Let's hop in and actually make a few trades. The first thing you're going to want to do is identify some high value players. So regardless of whether you're in live or historical, the first thing you're going to want to do is identify a couple of players on your team who are pretty valuable, but not necessarily super high end. So we've got, let's say Jose or Quiddy for this. He's got pretty good stuff and control, solid movement as well. Not a bad pitcher. He's not going to be an elite trade chip on our team, but shopping him away should give us a general idea of what some mid-value players are going to be and a good idea of who we may be interested in targeting. You can ask for prospects, regulars, and veterans when you're shopping players away. Chop up to two players away. Uh, this could give you an idea of who you're going to be willing or able to trade, how teams are valuing players, according to your players, and give you some general trade starting ideas. You can only do five a day, which isn't really a concern. That'll allow, if you just go one day at a time, we'll give you plenty of time to uh, come up with better trades and keep doing more. Another thing we're going to want to do is hire a better scout. So I'll actually hop into this after we get a trade up. So here it looks like we've got Actually, I think teams are valuing Quiddy a lot more than I expected because Dalton Varsho is normally a very high trade value player. I should also set this to OSA because our scout's probably pretty bad. We've got Yerman Mercedes, who is doing really well in real life, but a terrible catcher in OTP. CNL Perez. So this is a guy that I would actually identify as an undervalued player. CNL Perez is a starting pitcher being used as a reliever by the Reds. He's only 24 years old and he has some pretty good pitch quality. So we might be looking into picking him back up to be a starter for us if we have any holes in our rotation. I've never heard of Trevor Stefan before. Daniel Lynch, this is interesting. He's a pretty solid prospect for the Royals, and I would definitely be interested in trading for him if possible. We've got Packy Naughton, Shohei Otani, as well as Brandon Marsh, who is actually a top prospect. The Angels do undervalue him quite a bit, so as we can see, we're already starting to trade up a lot of the undervalued player results. Victor Gonzalez and Josiah Gray fit that mold as well. Of course, you could go to every player individually, but just taking a general look will give you a good idea of what you have available. Michael King is another good undervalued player, solid starting pitching prospect for the Yankees. 
Luis Guillorme is a top second baseman in the league defensively. He hits pretty well, too. Good personality. I really like picking him up when I can afford to do so. Albert Almora is not a bad fallback center fielder if you need one. Dalton Jeffries. Here's another good pitcher. He's got pretty solid uh, control. Nice movement as well. His diagnosis is XT, XST for his injury. That's really weird. Yeah, um, we're going to look into that one. We've got AJ Puck here as well. Here's another quality pitcher. And Sean Manaya is all right as well. Adam Hasley is a solid outfield prospect. Jacob Nix is a quality starting pitching prospect for the San Diego Padres. Just tore his UCL apparently, which is going to definitely lower his value. Michael Baez... Another quality pitcher, but also just tore his UCL. So those two guys are probably a lot easier to pick up than they should be. Ken Giles also in that boat. He just tore his UCL and is out for a year, but he has two other years on his contract at a relatively affordable value for a closer of his caliber. We've got Wilmer Flores here. He absolutely mashes left-handed pitching. So if you have need of a platoon first baseman, he is a good bet there to pick up. Seth Ledge is not a bad pitcher. Dakota Hudson is an either. If you need starters really badly, either of those guys would work. Manuel Margot. In a save where the Rays are willing to give up Margot for really anything at all, this is outstanding. He is definitely one of the better center fielders in the game, if not the best. With his outstanding defense, he's relatively controllable. He hits really well for a center fielder. Nate Lau is another quality hitter that you can get on the relative cheap end. Isaiah Kaner Falefa is also undervalued by the Rangers. He's an outstanding third baseman. You can use him at shortstop if you need. Carter Keboom. He's also a pretty solid hitter. Can develop to be a third baseman. I like him as a good value. So, yeah, we could see just shopping our guy away here that we're getting some offers that we know of to be pretty good trade value pieces. So, this is something I'd recommend doing in your league. You're not going to pick up every single one, but this will give you a good idea of where to start. And you can always go through each individual team and look at each player that you have any interest in to try to find guys you can get on the cheaper side as well. Something I would recommend everybody do. But in the meantime, let's just check out, say, the Dodgers. So here, let's say we want to trade for the undervalued Josiah Gray. But we're also interested in picking up a superstar starting pitcher and a first base prospect. So let's also throw in Michael Bush here. He can hit a little bit. Solid prospect for sure at first base. And Walker Bueller would be a superstar pitcher we're interested in picking up. Well, if we try to make this offer, there's no way they're going to accept it. Let's just throw in Lance McCullough as one of our more valuable players. And we would have to give up a cornerstone piece here, Alex Bregman or Jordan or Alvarez. We don't want to give up either of these guys in this trade at this point. So... What do we want to do here to make this one work? Well, the first thing we could do is take on expensive contracts that the Dodgers are willing to essentially just give us huge pieces to take on. So here we have Yasiel Sierra. He's making $7.5 billion this year, and they are much more willing to trade their players if we throw them in. Uh, in this case, it's just such a bad trade from their view that uh, they won't take it either way. But we're going to quickly just set all our budgets to zero to make some more cash here. And I'm going to throw another piece in. We're also interested here in potentially picking up another superstar level pitcher, Trevor Bauer. Even better, his contract is something they absolutely hate. They refuse to keep Bauer's contract and will pay us very wealthily to trade him away. So... Now we have a lot more options of pieces that we can give up here. Guys that we would not value nearly as much as Bregman or Alvarez. We're picking up another quality player. So this is this kind of thing where you just go through, work it out, see who's undervalued, who you can give up, and then make it work with the worst pieces you have available to you. Now Yuli Gurriel here is probably the worst player on this list. I would bet on that one uh, he does not really hit all that well he's a first baseman on a two-year contract that we don't really like and he's not going to provide too much value to our team now let's take out Lance McCullers because he is actually a very good pitcher we would like to keep and now they want a lot more so the next thing we're going to do is we have to remember the players that were on this list before we just add McCullers back 
take out Guriel and check out the list. Now who would they take? Well, we throw in one of these players, remove McCullers, and then put Guriel back in, and then we'll see what that does to the trade offer. We don't like Jake Odorizzi. He's on a relatively expensive contract and is a poor pitcher overall as well. So I would be more than happy to get rid of him here. We'll take him out, throw in Guriel, and see exactly what it looks like here. And now they're willing to take significantly less talent to make this one work as well. So we've got Michael Brantley here. He's a quality left fielder, don't get me wrong. But he is also pretty expensive and he's starting to age, so there's a little bit of worry there. I like Brantley a lot, but in this case, I would much rather give up the combination of Otto Rizzi and Brantley than give up a critical trade chip and or starting pitcher with Lance McCullers Jr., who is a very quality player. And if you would like to go at Lance McCullers, of course, you could do that. But in this case, this is probably the better trade for us, at least in my opinion. So this is what I'm going to do. And I think we're going to leave the trade at this. We're picking up some quality players between Bauer, Bueller, Josiah Gray, and Michael Bush. We're not really giving up anything at all. And we're taking on a bad contract, but it's not going to hurt us too much. We can just release him and we're done. And this is a whole lot of talent to pick up for really not giving up anything. These guys are all veterans. They're all 31 plus, and none of them are likely to be that productive for the Dodgers anyways. So love this trade. Really going to help our team out. Now, if you're trading for a superstar, it's going to look a little bit different. You're going to try to do the same thing, but the odds are it's going to be a little bit pricier. Let's just say we're interested in Cody Bellinger here. And nobody is going to make it work. So let's throw Lance McCullers Jr. He's a pitcher that we're willing to give up if we need to. Okay, maybe they're not willing to trade him at all. How about Gavin Lux? He's a superstar level player as well. So now they'd be willing to take your Don Alvarez, who is probably one of our better hitters at the moment, and we would like to avoid trading him here if we can. Well, let's see. Lux is a very good hitter. He's a spark plug. We still want to go through with this one. I, I would actually suggest doing this, but we're just going to say we do. So we'll ask for a worse player first. Tony Gonsolin should still be more valuable than Lance McCullers. They really like him uh, in some of their games. So we'll just throw him in there. Or actually, let's do Brewster Gratterall. So now we have a list of players that they're interested in. We're not necessarily going to be trading our top tier guys. So we want to come up with an idea of who they would be willing to take that's worth less to make it work. So here we've got Abraham Toro. He's not a bad hitter, but he's pretty much limited to a quarter infield position and he isn't hitting well enough to really justify that. He's more of a stopgap than anything and considering they're valuing him this highly, we're more than willing to give him up. Now we're going to throw Victor Gonzalez in and see who we have here. Josiah Gray, Josh James, Christian Javier, Jose Arquiti, Framber Valdez. All of these guys are pitchers that, since we just picked up two superstar pitchers, we don't really need. So which one are we most interested in trading? Josh James has some stuff, but his movement and control is a little bit questionable. He's coming off a of surgery. That could also affect his value. Christian Javier has really questionable movement. While he has some pretty good stuff and control, I don't think that he's going to really fit our rotation at all. So I will throw in Javier here, and we'll also throw in James, who I don't think is going to be a valuable long-term piece, especially given his age. And now we'll see what it takes to get Gavin Lux. In this case, it actually looks like we won't be able to pick him up. How about Dustin May? He's another superstar level player. Wow, okay, this is not going how I was hoping. Um, something else I have noticed that I should mention here is that superstar players are much more difficult to trade for at OTP 22 than they were in 21. You could pick up some ridiculous high-end talent without giving up any similar or level talent. You would just trade away a package like this where you give it up, yeah, a pretty good pitcher that they actually will pay a lot for. And then a couple of other players that they like middle tier. And you would be able to get a Gavin Lux or Cody Bellinger type player. But now that's not the case. Uh, you could still try to do this for some lower level stars like Gratterall, Gonsolin, May even. Well, except they weren't willing to give them to us. But that type of player. And uh, yeah, but for superstars, it's probably going to cost you a little bit more than that. A lot more than that, honestly. So we're not actually going to complete this trade. Another thing I should mention is for different trade difficulties, 
different things are going to be possible. So that trade may have worked if we were on the default challenge mode trade difficulty. It may have worked if we had more emphasis on different things that the Dodgers were interested in for our players, but less interested in for Gavin Lux, such as current year statistics. If we had that heavily elated, Gavin Lux at his pathetic start to his career would really not go over well with them. But on the other hand, guys like Josh James, Oh, wait, actually, never mind. That's not the best example. Guys like Lance McCullers, who just put up a pretty solid season, are going to look more valuable to them. Oh, uh, what else to go over here? Oh, another really important thing I should mention. Once you've got a trade completed, you're going to want to squeeze every last thing out of it you can. Relief prospects, by the way, are worth almost nothing to the AI. They will give them up virtually for free. So once you've completed a trade, if you still have slots left on the opposing team, definitely throw in relievers if you can. They will add to the value. Be sure to squeeze out cash or get contracts retained if possible. I would not recommend retaining long-term contracts if you are the one hit, or unless they're a really bad deal. Like if you're trading away Madison Bumgarner, you'll probably have to retain a good portion of his contract to get him off your payroll. But that's still valuable because you're saving money and he's not really going to be a decent piece at all for your team anyway. Am I missing anything here? I think that's pretty much it. Um, you're going to want to be targeting younger players and trades. If you want older players, you can just get them as free agents, and it still isn't going to make that much sense to do it in many cases, but you, I would really recommend trading for guys who are going to be cornerstones to your franchise or undervalued players that can contribute, and be sure that you are cycling through your talent, getting rid of older players, picking up younger ones. That'll really help your organization's health. You don't have to play like that, and you won't necessarily need to play like that, but it is what I have found to be the most effective strategy in terms of long-term success, so I would recommend it to everybody. I think that's going to do it. I don't really have too much other advice. If you guys want more specific trade videos going into more depth about certain things, or if you saw something I missed that I really needed to make a video about, uh, be sure to drop a comment and I will take care of that for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.